Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. We recently built a horsepower dyno to test die grinders and other high RPM tools. It's adjustable in watts until the tool bogs down, at which point that power level is easily converted to horsepower. Today we take a look at cordless versus air cutoff tools, and also yellow team versus red team within that cordless category, but recommend more below in this 3 inch cutoff tool category if you'd like to see more. And one of these was such an animal we needed to buy an additional load tester to piggyback onto and really turn the screws against that tool to slow it down. This is the Milwaukee 2522 M12 cordless cutoff tool. It goes for $149 retail, though sales often change that of course. And the curious thing about cordless cutoff tools is nearly all of them don't advertise a power rating. And the same goes for this Milwaukee. DeWalt advertises unit watts out like on their cordless drills, which we're in a unique position to test against, but can't really compare that rating versus other cordless brands. On an air tool, which we'll also be trying out, it's a simple one third horsepower, one half horsepower, or whatever it may be, which gives you an idea of how much grunt it's gonna have when you go to use it. So not a lot to go off of in the battery category, though this one's motor housing is hinting at being something bigger than what we found in the die grinders for less money, so that would be welcome if true. One thing that's definitely an advantage, which you'll see on many cordless offerings is forward and reverse, which allows you to throw the sparks away from the car instead of towards sensitive things like electronics, glass interiors, or if you prefer, at your coworker Larry who keeps forgetting to bring money for lunch. One of the latest cordless 3 inch cutoff tool offerings in the market is this, the DCS 438 from DeWalt, a bit pricier at $179 retail, but also 20 volt instead of 12 volt like the M12. Which I know according to some of you is a comparison you simply can't do. Both of these tools are sold to you to cut off, for example, an exhaust pipe maybe, but since they are different voltages, now they can't be compared. Like how car magazines shouldn't be comparing a Porsche versus a Corvette because of the difference in number of cylinders, even if the performance claims are the same. But unlike perhaps impact wrenches where 12 volt versus 18 or 20 volt max can look quite different in size, the DeWalt tool itself, and especially with some of the compact batteries DeWalt offers, starts to close any size gap that justifies limiting yourself to 12 volts. The power stack battery in particular makes this yellow tool stand out as now not only smaller, but now quite close in size, including the battery to an M12 using a four or five, six amp hour battery. In fact, in our ranking, we tally tools by volume by dunking them in water to measure the space the tool sort of takes up overall. And the M12 comes in at 700 milliliters, but 775 with an XC 6.0. That difference of 75 here is greater than the difference between a Milwaukee and DeWalt with a power stack. Of course, that gets blown out of the water literally when you add a beefcake battery with 21700 cells like a 6 amp hour here with 1.2 liters of displacement. And of course, an air tool, this Onyx Model 209 being one of the few inline cutoff tools on the market to compare to these cordless side by side is indeed inherently smaller, 450 milliliters. Now I'm sure if Milwaukee could make an M18 tool this kind of size with a battery, they would, assuming there's some beans to be gained there, and let's find out if there is. By attaching a socket to these cutoff tools, we can drive the hex collet on the spindle of this DC motor directly and see what kind of watts these tools can push, then easily convert that into juicy, juicy horsepower. And a bit of a disclaimer here, running a DC motor as a generator is in no way 100% efficient, whether that be versus horsepower or watts out claims. There's losses there, power curve differences, so our numbers aren't the end all be all. We tried to spec a motor that had similar operating RPM as these tools. So among similar speed tools like these, we find it is quite useful for comparisons in power, which is sort of the channel's premise in general. We have verified by decreasing air pressure on air tools and seeing drops in wattage or putting bigger batteries on cordless ones and seeing increases that it seems to work well. The M12 is up first in its most compact form, the CP 2.0 battery. So first thing we do on these tools is run them at 130 watts to see what kind of RPM they make under that bit of load. 130 watts being sort of the least these tools should be able to make based on previous testing. In this case, that's 14,300. Then we ratchet the watts up to see what it can hold. We're watching for RPM figures here. Obviously they will fall, but we don't want to see them nosedive, looking for levels that the tool can basically keep up with. So 
150, 160 watts fine, 170 watts, and you can feel it struggling a bit more. 180 watts it can sort of do, and 190 watts definitely not. So here's another go at 180 watts. RPM sort of drops by the hundreds, so 170, maybe 180 peak at times. We're already above the M12 die grinders power-wise, which means bigger motor, perhaps better gains with better batteries to feed it. Here's the XC 6.0, and we plan to look at all the batteries if you guys want to see them, let us know. Here's the RPM it could muster with 130 watts load. So that's 15,800 RPM, 1,500 up from the smaller battery. That's very nice. Let's see if it can beat the 170 to 180 watts it's made so far. 180 watts, fine so far. 190, 200, still a solid 13,500 RPM. 210, 220 watts, still not bad. At 230 watts, it starts dropping by 50 to 100 RPM a second. Down to 220 again, and it picks that RPM back up. And the tool smells a bit toasty now too, like very hot electrical wiring. We weren't able to stay at 230 watts all that long before dropping well under 10,000 RPM, but that's quite a bit up still on the M12 die grinders, which saw 150, 170. So that's 143 and 158 for the 14,300 and 15,800 RPM that they made at this level of load. We took your guys' recommendation of making these like 143 rather than 14.3 points. Then 180 watts peak and 170 sustained, capable with the CP 2.0, and 230 peak, 220 sustained for the XC 6.0. That works out to 0.24 and 0.31 horsepower, on point for a one-third horsepower tool, or even a tiny bit over here compared to a one-third horsepower air tool usually makes on our setup. But let's take a look at an air tool for comparison's sake. Here's how an Astro 209 did. And the air tool makes just over 17,000 RPM at 130 watts of load, if cutting speed at some load rather than simply max grunt is your aim. So let's see what it can do starting off at 200 watts, no issue, 220, 230, 250, 270, 290, 300, 320, we found that both 330 and 340 watts, it will stay above 11 to 12,000 RPM for a while, but drop RPM by the 50s or so in doing that. Much more comfortable at 320 watts. So in our testing, we found 17,100 RPM or 171 points and 340 watts peak, 320 watts sustained. And that's 0.46 horsepower, pretty close to the half horsepower it's rated for. and we theorize we may have some small parasitic loss from fan cooling on this DC motor, which of course would affect the cordless rating here too. Onto the DeWalt, up first with a 4 amp hour compact battery which has a single row of 21700 cells. Under load it makes similar RPM as the M12 did with an XC 6.0 battery. When finding its weak point, you better have your wheel turning thumb ready because the DeWalt takes some serious adjustment before it wants to slow down. 260, 270, 280, 290, 300, 310, 320 is finally the level at which it's dropping by 20 to 30 RPM a second rather than just in the singles. Let's see how a power stack compares to that. So at 310 watts, it's above 15,000 RPM, which is crazy. The 4 amp hour was at 12.5. 330. 340, 350 watts, 360 watts. We found only 370 and 380 watt levels made this combination drop continually in RPM to where it couldn't sustain that. But if you think that's crazy, this is a 20 volt XR tool after all. Let's check out this guy with a six amp hour XR pack. 16,000 RPM at 360 watts. That's 3,000 RPM higher than the others. 370 watts, 380 watts, 390 watts, and maxing out our load tester. 
But we've been prepared for this situation, one like this. Luckily, it makes little difference to these testers having two testers to both pull loads from the motor. This setup should be good for enough to max out our 800 watt motor should we need to on this high RPM setup. Obviously, we could go even higher testing different tools using a different motor. So you gotta sort of add these two testers together, but we threw a lot at the six amp hour DeWalt combo. We threw 350, 400, 450 watts. We found only 490 and 500 watts caused the RPM to fall at rates that this tool couldn't eventually recover and keep up with. But even then, not super quickly, and it could handle 480 watts just fine all day. That's an absolute beast of a tool compared to really air cordless in most things. It's a huge hump to get over this volume size difference though. So let's take a look on the ranking. This is what these battery types put up in RPM under load, basically air tool levels here. Then at peak load with a tiny power stack, that's able to deliver a lot of amps through those wider tab terminals on those battery pouches. It beat out the four amp hour compact with 370 watts here, 360 watts sustained. And a massive 500 watts peak that we saw throughout our testing here and 480 all day with a six amp hour albeit admittedly feels too large of a tool battery. That's one half horsepower flat for the power stack combo and 0.67 horsepower for the six amp hour. Now who knows how DeWalt gets their 550 watt rating that they assign this tool, which realistically we got quite close to here. I did not expect that. They do have larger batteries still, so perhaps it's from one of those. If it's the first level that causes the tool to just instantly stall, well, just speaking from a user's perspective, if the tool is rapidly slowing down, you've already reached that motor's power limit. It's certainly not above that point, it's at or below that point. And if you look at air tool dynographs, it reflects this, the tool has to power through that range of load to be rated at that. I have a feeling few people knew that there was a 200% difference in power between these two tools. And no, it's not simply from being two thirds more voltage. We often see small tools and higher voltage, even from the same brand, not make a crazy increase in power, like from 18 volt to 40 volt max Makita, or even some 20 volt DeWalt tools versus their 12 volt ones and M12, like in their ratchets. Suggest so more cutoff tools and other high 18 to 22,000 RPM tools you wanna to see tested on this setup below. Click subscribe to see more of those in future episodes. And thanks for watching.